So there are things that can scare men off, right? You don't want to do these things because you could start dating a guy and things could be going well and you really like him and you really see something serious with him. So you want to know what are the do's and don'ts so you can come across the best way possible. Well, we're about to go through eight things that can turn a guy off or that can scare a guy off. The first thing that can scare a guy off when you start dating him is expressing that you want marriage and kids too soon. And I don't mean too soon as in, oh, I want kids in the next five years too soon i mean you tell him on the first date kind of too soon and here's the thing it's not saying that you shouldn't express what you want and what your intentions are there's nothing wrong with that but how and when you do it is what is key because the thing is I get it. You might be at a point in your life where maybe you're a little bit older, maybe you've kind of established yourself in your career or in your job, whatever, and you want to start building a life with someone. You want to start thinking about, okay, when can I have kids and start doing all these things? I completely understand that. But if you do express on the first date, especially to a guy, hey, I'm looking for marriage and kids within the next few years, even if he wants that himself, that's gonna scare him off. And the reason this scares him off, even if he wants that, is because we don't like to feel pressure for things to happen. We want things to feel like they happen more organically, especially when it comes to dating, relationships, and love. And this is one of those areas that men do not like pressure even if he wants it himself. But ladies, you understand this yourself. You could meet a guy, go on a date with a guy, and you could be really attracted to him, and you could be open to being physical with him. You could be open to having sex with him. But if you feel that there's pressure for him to have sex, like it's like, yeah, I only have sex with girls on the first date, or like even after the first drink, he's just like, hey, should we go back to mine? Even if you are open to it and you actually wanted to, the pressure of him trying to do it with you when you're not ready, that can turn you off him, and then you don't want to do it anymore. This is exactly the same thing when it comes to men, marriage and kids. And one of the main reasons why this turns a guy off is because if you really express that this is your strong intention right from the beginning, it can make him feel that you're just looking for a sperm donor. It can make him feel that you're just looking for a guy who can give you kids and who can maybe provide some security for you long term. So it seems like the desire you have isn't a genuine interest in him but more of what he can do for you. So what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to never say that this is what you're wanting and looking for in the near future? No, but how and when you do it is what is key. And especially it's important that you express this because if there's a guy and he doesn't want that and you want different things, then you don't want to waste your time either. So how and when do you do this? The way you do this is you ask him, what does he want for his foreseeable future? And that's gonna give you a real indication where his mindset is at and whether he's open to having that with someone. So if he expresses something where he's like, oh, I'd like to find and build something with someone, I'd like to start a connection, and yeah, I do want a family one day, then that's a really good sign. And then you can express, oh, that's what I'm looking for as well. And then once you both establish that, you don't need to put pressure on it anymore. Job done. This next thing that can really turn a guy off a woman, and I see so many women trip over this, is expressing to him that you've had sex quickly with previous guys in the past, especially if you're waiting to have sex with him. So here's the thing. I completely understand that maybe you've learned from your mistakes in the past. You've learned that having sex with a guy really, really quickly and really, really soon, especially when you've not allowed the space for him to you know, grow an emotional bond with you, you've learned that that can be detrimental to actually building a long-term relationship. However, one thing that I would say is that guys see intimacy with women, with you, as part of the prize. So when you express to a guy, especially if you're kind of taking things slower with him, when you express to a guy that there have been guys in the past that you've been sexually intimate with very quickly, it says to him that you don't desire him as much as you have with previous guys in the past. Because in his head, if you did, then you guys would have sex together sooner. Now I get it, it's actually because you see more value in him that you don't wanna mess it up, that you've learned from your mistakes before and you really want things to go well. But because he sees sexual intimacy as a prize, he just sees it as, oh, this guy did barely anything and you didn't even care about him and you gave him the prize that he wanted, whereas I wanna have that with you, but you're making me work 10 times harder. Well, clearly you're not as into me as you need to be for this dynamic to work. 
That's what goes on in his head. So what, does this mean that, okay, because you've learned from your experiences that you have to sleep quickly with every guy moving forward? No, that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, don't tell him. If you can avoid telling him, then avoid telling him. Don't tell him. If he asks, then he asks at his own risk. And it's really important for you to express that if you have had experiences where you've slept with someone like the first night you met them and everyone has their experiences, nothing wrong with that, just express to him, look, that you were really not in a good place or your mindset wasn't the correct frame of mind and that you would never do that now. Because the last thing we want him to feel is that you're not his first choice because if he does feel that way, he's just gonna be put off by that. This next thing that really turns a guy off is not saying thank you, not showing appreciation or gratitude. Because the thing is, when a guy takes you out on a date, when he picks you up, when he does these things, when he drops you home, a guy wants to do these things because he wants to show his intention and his investment in you. But there's nothing worse than putting yourself out there, investing energy in someone, and there's not even an acknowledgement, there's not even a thank you, an appreciation. You don't want to come across as entitled because nobody wants to be with that kind of person who goes, oh, well, all of these things, you should be doing them for me. Oh, here's a thing. Even if you feel that way, even if you do think, okay, well, if a guy's into me, he should do these things. He should invest in these areas. Even if you think that, you should still absolutely show appreciation and gratitude. Because if you like him, if he feels appreciated by you, he's just gonna want to do more things for you. It's literally positive encouragement, as opposed from a place of, yeah, you did that, but yeah, you're meant to do that. So what, you want a pat on the back for it? That's not nice. Imagine if you invited him over for dinner, right? And you cooked for him and he was like, yeah, that's exactly the kind of woman I want. And that's what a woman should do for her man. So yeah, I'm not gonna, that's like a given. Even if that's what he wants, you still want him to say thank you, right? Just say thank you, appreciation, it's not hard. This next one, and this one is kind of hard to avoid if it's already happened, but it's good for you to be aware of, is if you've had sex with one of his friends, there's no easy way to say this, so I'm just gonna rip the band-aid off. No guy wants to be marrying a woman where there's another guy at that wedding who has been inside his woman, okay? It's very important for the respect of the relationship that he chooses to have and who he chooses to have. Now, it happens in life where maybe you have had a sexual experience with one of his friends. That's fine, okay? If he can avoid knowing, that's optimum. But if it's one of his good friends and he can't avoid knowing, this is something that is going to constantly niggle on his mind. So you're gonna to have to make more of an effort to appease this. It's just the way it is. I'm not saying it's right or fair, but it's the way it is. If you care about him, this is something that you'll be aware of. And the best way to do this is anytime it comes up in conversation, even if it does, it shouldn't, but even if it does come up in conversation, at least the first time it does, you express to him that your friend wasn't very good and it wasn't what you were looking for. Now I get it, that might be his boy, but he wants you to be his woman and he would want you to say that, okay? That's the best way to handle it, but I'll be honest. For some guys, if you've been with one of his close friends, it's very difficult for him to move past that, right? The closer the friend is, the harder it is for him to move past that. But just be aware. This next thing that is a turn off is if you're constantly on your phone, I know we live in a social media age, Instagram, Facebook, dating apps, God forbid you're swiping on someone while you're on a date with a guy, right? And I've known, I've known guys and girls to do this. But if you're constantly on your phone, it just looks like you're not interested. It looks like you don't care about spending time with him, especially if he's trying to converse with you and have a conversation with you. Or if you're constantly taking selfies or you take more time trying to get the perfect photo than you do in actually engaging with him, it just makes you look self-centered. That's the truth. When you're on a date and you're spending time one-to-one, -one, put the phone down, you don't need it. Whoever it is can survive for an hour without you texting them. This next thing that is a turn off, not just for guys, but for girls as well, is a negative mindset. There is nothing harder than spending time with someone where they are constantly complaining about the issues that they're having with their job, with their friends, with their relationships, whatever it is. It is so draining. Now don't get me wrong, okay? In life, sometimes life hits you in the face. It happens, all right? We all have our problems, right? We go up and down in life. But mindset is the key to everything. 
even if you acknowledge, go, okay, this thing happened, right? But I can see the silver lining here. I can see what I've learned from here. If you show him that, especially if it's like a major event that's happened, that's really, really attractive because it means that, oh, we can make a great team. We can make a great team player or you're showing yourself to be a great team player for life things. And look, sometimes we just need to vent, we need someone to talk to, that's fine. As long as it's not constantly complaining about something, being negative about something, because then if all he's gonna feel is feeling depleted by spending time with a woman who's very negative, even if he likes that woman, he's gonna want to spend less time with her. Because every time he thinks, okay, I'm gonna be seeing so-and-so, it's like, do I have the emotional capacity to deal with this right now? To deal with her right now and if he doesn't he's gonna spend less time this next thing that can be a turn off and this is more dependent on the kind of guy you want but this does come up a lot is if you sit too much in your masculine with him all the time now like i said this is depending on the kind of guy that you want to attract if you want to attract the kind of guy who is a strong masculine confident man who is able to lead a woman who is constantly bringing a masculine energy into the relationship there's no room for him to be masculine with you without trying to dominate you and yeah that could be fun in the bedroom within a relationship that's not going to work you're going to clash now look human beings we have masculine and feminine within us okay it's not saying you have to be all feminine all the time right we're complex creatures however this is all about attracting the right kind of man. If that's the kind of man you want, that is what he's going to be drawn to. A woman who does like to sit in her feminine with him. A woman who does like for him to be in his masculine. Even encourages him to do so. In order for energy to flow, there needs to be polarity, right? North and South Pole. That's why there's an electromagnetic field around the Earth, okay? The positive and the negative side of the batteries or the magnets, they come together, okay? For in order for energy to flow, there needs to be polarity. In a relationship, the polarity comes from the masculine and the feminine and the energy is the passion right it is in the opposing energies that drives passion and sustains it over a long period of time if you get two people who are both in their masculine or both in their feminine when they're in relationships you could have everything in common but there's going to be a lack of passion there's going to be a lack of fire a lack of chemistry and this is something that i say with my clients a lot if you're a woman and Bringing in your masculine has helped you in your career, which for most people it does, okay? That's great, that's fantastic. But it's not about weakening yourself. It's about being in areas of yourself that a man values when you're around him. You can afford to relax. You can afford to let him take the lead if you've built that trust with him. But you have to allow the space, give him the opportunity to do that. Like I said, being in your masculine is great for your career, but in your love life, if you want a more feminine man, then that's gonna work for you. But if you want a more strong, confident man who can lead, this is the best way you're gonna attract and keep that kind of man. This next thing that turns guys off or turns everyone off, really, is poor hygiene. I feel like nowadays there's, there's no excuse for having poor hygiene for a man or a woman, right? Unless you live on the street. And if you live on the street, dating is the least of your worries. Having poor hygiene just looks like you don't have a level of self-love and self-care which is important and attractive. You want your man to have good hygiene, right? You wanna be able to cuddle him and you love his smell, you love when he goes out, all of that. He's gonna want that in a woman too, okay? Just apply the standard you want for him to yourself. And this next thing that really turns guys off, and understandably so, is the men are trash mindset. How can you take interest in a man that you want to date and that you like, but you have the men are trash attitude? It doesn't make sense. And the thing is, I get where this comes from, all right? It's actually a defense mechanism. Maybe you've had some bad experiences in the past with quite a few guys that you've chosen, all right? And because of that, you have this perception of men. So when moving forward with any new guy that comes to your life, you give the impression or you even say yourself, yeah, all men are trash in hopes of him going, okay, well, you know what? Because she thinks that and because I like her, I'm gonna work really hard to make sure and prove that I'm a good guy and I'm gonna be extra careful around her, right? I get it, it makes you think it'll make a guy go, I'm gonna pull out all the stops, right? All this really makes a guy do 
is think, okay, I'm not starting from zero, I'm starting from minus 10. And I have to prove extra hard that I'm actually just a good, decent guy, and I'm never gonna be given the benefit of the doubt. And then he thinks, why am I being punished for what previous men that have nothing to do with me have done to you? That's what a guy thinks. He thinks you're less likely to trust him. He thinks you're less likely to follow him if he wants to do something. He thinks you're less likely to trust for him to make a plan. He thinks there's gonna be a lot of conflict and a lot of clashing. Purely because you said all men are trash. <laughs> I have to be honest, okay? Let's be honest for a second. How can you be interested in a guy, right? When you say that all men are trash, okay? If you are in the mindset that all men are trash, which I understand for some women, they go through a bit of a phase. Some women last two months, some last 20 years, depending on the kind of guys that they've chosen, right? But if that is the mindset you're in, then you are not ready to date. You are not open to receiving good from a man, okay? Yes, some guys are trash out there, but there's some really good, great guys that get snapped up very quietly. Right? Very subtly, they get snapped up. And all you want to do or express is go, okay, I've had some bad experiences with guys in the past. I believe there's some good ones out there and I'm gonna do my best to find him. Or you could say, look, all men are trash, but you, I can see that you're not. Look how you turn that around. <laughs> if you're looking for a guy who sparks up your love life, make sure you subscribe to this wonderful tribe. And as always, keep it slick.